Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to create a, a continuous integration pipeline using GitHub Actions, and we're going to mimic what this directory in GitHub is doing, the sample project. We're going to create a GitHub repo, open up Azure Cloud Shell, make sure we have SSH key set up if they're not set up, make a scaffolding, test our code, and then go through and set up GitHub Actions and verify that it works. So. In order to do that, first thing up here is uh, I'm going to actually just create a new repo. So I'll go to my uh, GitHub project, and uh, from here, what I will say is a new repository. And we'll just call this one um, Azure Hello, and I'll leave it private. I'll initialize this with a readme. Go ahead and say uh, Python, perfect. And then I'll also ensure that Azure Pipeline is set up because I will use that later. Okay, this looks like it's good. Next up, what I'll do is I'll go to my Azure Shell here and I'll click on this icon for the Azure Shell. And this will just wake it up and make sure that we're, we're good to go. So this takes just a second, perfect. Now, the first thing that I would typically do is set up a SSH key if it's not set up. The way you would do that is you would type in SSH hyphen keygen dash T RSA, and you would go through and you know set up those keys if they didn't exist. In this case, I've already got the keys, so I'll say no. And then you would paste those keys and put them into GitHub. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, this is something that you've already done, so I won't go to, to that step. But the next thing that I would do is, is actually clone this uh, repo locally. So let's go to Azure Hello, let's click on clone. We'll copy this and um, we'll say uh, get clone, just like that, Azure Hello, perfect. And then I'll CD into Azure Hello. And from here, what I will do is uh, build out the scaffolding uh, of the project. So it's gonna be a make file, it'll be a requirements file, and it'll also be a, a couple of files. It'll be a test file in, in a regular um, application file just so I get the scaffolding set up. So first up, I'll say touch uh, make file. Next, I'll say touch requirements.txt. Next up, I'll say touch hello.py and also say touch um, test hello.py. Perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and edit that first file, the make file. And this will just be really a, a set of instructions that tell our project what to do. In fact, I can uh, mimic what's in this repo here and just cut and paste it. And you can see there's an install, a test, a lint, and an all step. So let's go ahead and uh, put that inside of here. So I'll type in colon, set paste, insert mode, paste it in. Great, next up, uh, what I will do is uh, edit the requirements file, requirements file, I also can just mimic what's in this other repo and put in a um, uh, really a, co a copy, and, copy and paste here. So we'll go ahead and say this, copy and paste. And uh, again, do uh, set, paste, insert, there we go. Next up, what I will do is vim the hello file and I'll also do the same thing. I'll just go to um, my hello script here and just kind of paste that. It's a very simple uh, script that just really gives me the first step of what I need to do in my project. This is just a, a, a really like a, a proof of concept that I, that I like to set up when I first create continuous deployment. There we go. Just a, f a few functions. And then next, what I will do is um, also edit the test file. So here we go, vim, test hello, and set paste, insert mode, go to my test here, and go to this section, and then go ahead and paste that in. There we go, paste. So you can see what I do is I import that sample script here, and just run a few test functions, and, and make sure that everything works great. That looks like it does. And uh, once I've got that, really the scaffolding is there to, to get a local test working. So how do I get a local test working? Well, uh, what we'll need to do 
is go back to this project and just look at uh, the, what I've got set up here uh, in terms of the instructions. The Really, the virtual environment needs to be created. And you can see here that I actually uh, would need to do this. So we can say, you know, virtual environment. Uh, in this case, I'll just call it the same thing as my repo. I'll say Azure hello. And notice here I say Python 3-M VENV tilde slash dot. And then I put typically an invisible file in my home directory, an invisible folder that's the same name as the repo. So it makes it easy to remember. Next, once that's created, I'll type in source um, tilde slash dot Azure hello, uh, bin activate, just like that. Great. Okay, next up I'll say make all. And this will install, lint, and test. Perfect. And it looks like it's working. Here we go. Great. Everything was passed. Uh, the lint was, was passed and the tests were passed. And so really it's ready to uh, be, be pushed. Now there'll be a couple of irritating messages that I'll show you about uh, that show up. And uh, we'll say get status. And so I'll say commit, and it'll ask me to configure some things, which which is fine. Uh, initial commit. Here we go. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, you may or may not get those irritating messages. Since I've already committed into this repo, they don't show up. But if you do, just follow the instructions and make sure that you then commit after you follow the instructions. Now that I've got that set up, really, uh, I'm ready to go through and uh, set up GitHub Actions. So how do I do that? Well, let's go to this Azure Hello project and look at the files. There we go. And then go to Actions. And under Actions, I'll say set up a workflow myself. And I'll again look at this sample project and go to, to its uh, sample code. Look at raw and just cut and paste this in. It's pretty simple. Uh, and I'll explain what this does. Uh, we will um, say uh, paste here. And what this is going to say is every time I make a push, run a container that is Ubuntu and runs Python 3.5. Uh, do the same set step, steps that I'm doing locally. So do a make install, do a make lint, and do a make test. Great. Let's go ahead and commit that. We'll say um, initial config. Perfect. There we go. And I can now um, push that. And now if I go to actions, here we go. There's an initial config. Perfect. And what will happen next here is, is that it'll go through and do all those steps that I told it about. So this is really the beauty of using something like GitHub Actions with the Azure Cloud Shell is that you're able to actually test the whole uh, setup locally, make sure that you've got a scaffold project working, you know, run a lint, run a test, uh, also make sure that you've got the proper um, packages installed. And then it's trivial to then go to your SaaS build server and then verify that it can also do a lint, it can also do a test, it can also do um, the, the, these these same steps. So this is really a, a powerful workflow that in addition to whatever else you're gonna do, whatever other build server like Azure Pipelines, it has another layer of checking, especially in the in the context of an open source project. This is a, a great resource to add to your to your project. And I I'll really call it a, a you know best practice is is what we're setting up here. So you can see it set up Python uh, 3.5 that was what the container did. Uh, and then next, it's, it goes through and it installs the dependencies. It lints it, and then it tests it, and you can see that it, it all worked. Now, the only other thing that, that we could do that's kind of fancy is, like I say, create status badge, copy that status badge, mark down, go back to my project here, and then um, go to the readme and just throw this up uh, on top. There we go. And then, in fact, I can even put a little message here that says, um, for example, that you may want to look at this other project for instructions. There we go. Let's uh, take this out, put this in here, 
and say inside of this readme, um, you can create this repo by following the steps here. All right, well, thank you for paying attention and uh, hope you have a good time doing the same step yourself.